Well, Scott's Knives and Watches, and this is another one of those CR Trading Post, I guess, videos. But these are some things that I picked up at CR Trading Post. Now, is this video about CR Trading Post or is it about Lodge? Probably not. It's really about any cast iron cookware. Of course, Lodge is made in the United States. You can see by the American flag and said made in the United States. It's actually made in Tennessee, probably. Da da da. This, that, or the other. I don't really know. To be honest, I don't really care. Um, my only thing when I'm purchasing something is uh, the cost and the features that it has. And a lot of times, <clears throat> that where it's made matters. Now, Lodge, of course, has their own uh, store system. They have a few different stores out there where their Lodge discount stores or whatever. Uh, they also, you can go in and buy seconds. You can do this. You can do that. This is going to be more towards the latter uh, than the previous. And I'm sorry that I have to come out of character, but this is actually, believe it or not, uh, this doesn't have the potential of destroying anyone's life, so there's no need for the character. Um, why is it a second? Well, it's generally a second for a couple different reasons. One would be casting, which means it was cast improperly, or the finish that was applied to it didn't take correctly. I'm going to address the casting because the finish in the end of the day doesn't matter to me. Now, these things are pre-seasoned now. And that matters. But, in the, the nature of the beast, the casting is going to give you a lot more problems. Now, there are a lot of different videos people have put out there on how to season these things. There are a lot of different methods, technologies, and uh, just theory. Uh, Lodge's way of doing it is very, very extremely advanced. Um, so, you know, you choose the choice that you best suits you. Let's deal with cost number one. Now, for this large griddle here, which uh, looks like about 12 by 24, I have no earthly idea. Um, it says it's 10 and a half. 10 and a quarter. That must be the inside uh, surface. Um, I got it for, uh, no, 10 and a quarter was here. $12.97 for this Made in America cast iron uh, Dodge uh, skillet. USA, man. Yeah. And then I paid uh, $38 for this griddle. This griddle is double sided. As I said, this really isn't about. I'm not trying to sell you the shit, because who the hell is going to use that griddle? Well, number one, you're going to have to have a gas stove, or <clears throat> you're going to have to be cooking over a campfire. I'm choosing the latter, as I said. Uh, no, I didn't say that, did I? This is for cooking over a campfire for me. This big lodge 15 and something inch griddle um, is for Mrs. Guns, Knives, and Watches, because when she cooks things... She needs a lot of space. Uh, she needs something that consistently heats up, which cast iron does, and a lot of different things. Um, these little 10-inch skillets, believe it or not, we use quite often, but we use them for two different things. You can make really good cornbread in them, and having a, <clears throat> a restaurant that's French Southern, uh, you tend, cornbread will come up. Um, also pies if you ever have had a pie like you run out of those really good Pyrex uh, pie plates and don't use those cheap ass aluminum ones your pie is never going to come out right it's almost impossible to get it to do it uh, without making so many compromises that it's really a waste of your time um, <clears throat> and that's why those pre-made pie crusts have so many ingredients, have so much this, there, the other, and da 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 da, da uh, because they've had to make those compromises on a very thin. Uh, what you want in any pie plate, or whether you're making cast iron, cast iron, or cornbread, it has to be able to deal with cornbread extremely high heat, because you are cooking that as high as your oven will probably go. Of course, you're gonna start start it on the top on the. Uh, 
top and then transfer it over and I'm not getting into the recipe because that's as I've said in the past chefs don't usually give out the recipes um, but <coughs> it works for that and for twelve dollars and ninety seven cents the cheap shit that's made in China which you really possibly don't know what goes into it makes a difference the reason I buy American cast iron is not just because I want to buy American, it's because I want to believe that the products that go into its manufacture will not kill me. Now, we've seen through a lot of Chinese manufacturing in this, there, or the other. When they are competing to get the lowest price, they make compromises. You know, the McDonald's toy incident where we're giving little children McDonald's toys with lead paint on it so that they can put it in their mouth and chew on it you know, didn't work out all that well. But if you buy cookware that is seconds or something, this is what you want to look for. Um, first, <clears throat> the sticker. If it bothers you to walk in someone's store that's selling something that could be a second and take the sticker off of it, then don't do it because that sticker right there can obscure a lot of different imperfections. Now, as far as the casting goes, because those are really the only imperfections that matter to me, because seasoning on a good skillet, you know, happens over the use of the skillet or you can speed up the process on its own. What you don't want are you don't want divots. Any uh, divot, a depression in the in the cast iron. What you want is a nice, smooth surface. And can you hear that? Okay. That is an almost abrasive quality that this cast iron has, okay? Now, how do we resolve that issue? I'm not going to do it on film because I put quite a bit more effort, time, believe it or not, into this than this is going to allow because I'm doing this impromptu like I do most things. <clears throat> well, what you would do is you would take a sandpaper and I'm not saying a real aggressive sandpaper. You might start out with 220, something like that. You could use a, uh, a, uh, a finer grit sandpaper. You could start with something else. Then what you do not want to do is just tear off a piece, put it in there and start rubbing it with your hand. The actual no flat surfaces on your hand fact really will screw up the inside of this if all we're not wanting to do is our knock off the high spots now what does knocking off the high spots do that makes it to where things do not stick and it is very very easy to get a spatula up under something because that spatula is not getting caught or not having to go over those high spots now, divots can't do anything about those. If you find one that's been screwed up that way, you're foobarred, man. So what you do is you take, and I'm trying to find something that would be of adequate size, and this kestrel thing's a little big, but that's okay. We're going to take our sandpaper. We're going to tear it to where it's about the size of the kestrel uh, container which normally I'd use a wood block but I don't have a wood block right around me and I'm doing this impromptu wrap it around it get it really tight and then I would simply just do circular motions like as I said this isn't really the way I wish which I would do it but it speeds up the break-in process. Now, after you do this, you are going to have to re-season it because you have removed that seasoning and those hot high spots off of that cast iron. But as you can see, all those lighter gray areas were high spots. And that is what people talk about when they're wanting to break in a piece of cast iron that's what you've got to get off there. Now I still have quite a bit of high spots around the edges, but we're in the center basically right now. I've got a pretty good surface. 
Now, I would continue on with that process. I would not want to go to where you are taking the finish off the flats. We're just speeding up the process. We're not creating a tremendous amount of work for ourselves. We're trying to minimize work, not magnify it. So just be aware of that when you're doing this. You're not trying to remove the finish off the flats that Lodge put on their cast iron. You are only trying to take the high spots off, which will make the break-in of this piece of cookware a lot easier. Will make it will make your dishes turn out a lot better. Well, unless you're doing cornbread, hell, it doesn't matter then. But if you're if you're doing anything that, that could possibly stick, uh, you know, cornbread, you're using so much uh, animal fat, and you're using so much other stuff that you know you're you're good to go. Uh, in fact, that would probably be a really good way of of re-breaking these ends. You start using them for cornbread and then move them into pies. Um, and that's just kind of behind the scene kitchen stuff. Anyway, um, this is the Lodge, you know, <laughs> cookware. And if you want to buy seconds or you this, that, or the other, it is a way of doing it um, to where you don't get a substandard product. Um, you can save a lot of money and uh, get something that works just as good as if it was a first run, first quality piece. Remember, a fine grit sandpaper, very lightly go around it, circular motions. You do not want to get sandpaper in your hand and do it. You want to have a perfectly flat surface and re-season it after, after, uh, after use. Anyway, this is Guns, Knives, and Watches, and uh, have a good one.